Hi again. Uh, we're in. We're going to be talking about Chapter Four in this module. And as a reminder, in Chapter Three, we talked about the design uh, stage of operations. And in Chapter Four, we're going to look into the process aspect of it. Now, I want to continuously remind you that we emphasize concurrency. So we're not going to be throwing things over the wall just because we're focusing on one chapter at a time. As we talk about design, we want to think ahead to uh, manufacturing and any other part of the process as well. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to look at the flow of a product or the service that we're providing. We're going to consider what needs to be done to fulfill an order. Uh, and translate that into the process that we use. And then take a look at how we need to focus our operational and uh, look at different situations, whether we have to uh, mass produce or even mass customize. Those are two different terms. Uh, look at the environmental issues involved. And again, come back to the cross-functionality of whatever we do. Uh, with respect to the product flow, uh, uh, there are different types of product flow th that may get involved depending on the type of product, the processes, and even the market or the customer. The one for efficiency purposes, what most organizations try to do is translate everything to what we call a continuous process. That is, you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, almost to a point of uh, mo being monotonous, but you have to, uh, from an efficiency point of view, be careful of that. Uh, we'll talk about it in the chapters. You could, in some cases, create an assembly line where you're just assembling products together, which is different than a batch uh, process or a flow process. You could look at a batch process itself, which is looking at individual uh, runs, shorter range runs. A job shop, which is really more oriented to single processing and products. Or even a project, which is a little different definition in itself. In many cases, a project will be used in when you're in more into the service industry and developing uh, processes for specific applications. Uh, continuous process applies to industries such as uh, beer or in most cases uh, any type of liquid processing. Paper, where you're just repeatedly running the same type of product, oil, again, it's a liquid process. Uh, you usually try to automate those processes as much as you can and uh, have a high degree of standardization in them because you can achieve that with a continuous process. They usually relate to high volume production. Uh, the products are usually type what we call commodity products that can be repeated and look alike each time you make them. Uh, a real focus and a real driver is lowest cost in this type of process. But at the same time, you want to also have flexibility in it. Uh, in a product flow environment, there's more of a linear sequencing of your operations. One comes after another. It's usually a this uh, gets more involved in what we call assembly line flows. Uh, they're usually discrete products such as autos, appliances, things like that that do get in assembled. Uh, they're also high volume just like the previous process was and then the products are usually standardized. Uh, the difference is it's a more inflexible process because once you go into more flexibility, you're sacrificing e 
efficiency or cost. In this case, assembly line flow is uh, geared to uh, give you more efficient results. And another distinction is that it usually uh, results in a lot greater investment in equipment and capabilities in order to do it. Uh, there are illustrations in a book about assembly line flow, such as figure 4-1 with metal brackets, how you uh, do separate operations in sequence, but you have to do them all before you're finished. Uh, and in a batch flow, on the other hand, it's different because there's a defined quantity level that you're trying to produce. And once you do it, you're really breaking down and setting up another process. So no two processes are usually the same in a batch flow. Uh, there is a flow from work center to work center. It usually applies more in low volume type of applications. And it usually applies when you're trying to process a variety of different products uh, through a single process. Uh, it's an intermittent process and the labor and equipment that you use it requires a lot of flexibility to, uh, to accomplish it. Mm. In a job shop, by comparison to the other processes we talked about, uh, it's usually single batches, smaller batches, and focused on a, a much more customized type of product. Uh, it requires a lot more design, but not as an efficient or high volume production type of uh, manufacturing or processing. Uh, usually there are many different types of products that are involved here. And once again, you have to have a lot of flexibility in both your labor and your equipment because you're not running the same type of thing continuously in those situations. Uh, let's see. Product flow projects usually are, involve single project products. Uh, the labor and materials involved are usually clearly defined and of specified and limited quantities. Uh, the challenge is mostly in a planning sense because uh, you're constantly uh, changing your schedule and uh, you know as changes take place in your processes you're having to take other looks at your schedule and make changes in them. Not a lot of automation that can be brought into this type of process and as some of the other ones you always have to be very flexible in your uh, labor and your equipment in terms of how you use it. Now another aspect of this chapter is uh, order fulfillment. Uh, in, in this chapter as we talk about uh, making and delivering product, you have two ways you could do it. You could either do it by looking at your order uh, demand and make things to what you think people are asking for or you can build inventory based on a forecast and which is riskier because if you are off on your forecast then you're going to be stuck with some extra inventory and that gets very expensive. You, In order to complete your order fulfillment you either make to stock, you make to order or you assemble to order, which is another version of making to stack. And we'll talk about those in more detail. Uh, in a make to stack situation, uh, you're producing finished goods which for inventory and the customer buys uh, that product from your inventory. The advantage it gives you is it allows you to smooth your production and become more efficient in that part of the process. The disadvantage it gives you is 
you're always uh, betting on your accuracy and forecasting how much inventory you need and usually you're going to get stuck with some more than you want. Uh, at the service level as opposed to a product, uh, orders can be filled when requested. Uh, your inventory turnover can be tailored a little bit better to what your customer's uh, need is. You can adjust your backlog or open orders uh, to balance them with any new orders that are taking place. And you can manage your inventories a lot. The key thing there is the lead time that it takes to replenish, the, replenish those inventories. Uh, in a make-to-order situation, on the other hand, uh, you'd wait until you get an order before you start production. You don't plan on any finished goods. You usually uh, schedule and plan your production according to what the customer's demand is. It does create more intermittent type of process which uh, says you're going to be left sufficient in some cases and therefore your costs might be higher. And the, the key in factors to consider in this process are things like lead time, whether you can complete the orders on time or whether you have to uh, you know, meet the customer's demand in some way, and what the impact is on quality in doing any of these things. Uh, in an assemble to order, which as I said earlier, is something between the previous two processes, what you're doing is you're producing sub-assemblies or parts to a certain stage based on high volume parts that get used over and over again even though the end product is not a high volume end product. What you do then is you can carry inventory on, at a lower level because these parts are used in, in, in what we call commonality in different applications. So your chance, your risk is not that high that you're going to have excess inventory at that level. but it stays there as what we call work and process inventory until it gets pulled and used for the particular subassembly or end product that gets made. It allows you to improve your turnaround time and increase your speed of service. It also allows you to manage your inventories at certain levels a lot better and it also helps you to maintain the quality of product and service that you're trying to keep. Uh, we will get into some examples of that in the textbook and uh, you, you can look at some of the uh, illustrations in the textbook in chapter four that uh, you want to take a good look at, make sure you understand them and can follow the flow that they're illustrating. Uh, okay, uh, some very important decisions in selecting the process you have to look at the characteristics of your process and kind of almost develop a matrix of factors that have to be continue, uh, considered. Uh, those are the factors we just talked about. And uh, you have to look at external factors as well as internal factors. Things like the market conditions, what the competition does, capital requirements, how much investment you have to make, your own labor situation, and see how you can best manage it, and especially the state of the technology that you're using vis-a-vis -vis what technology is being developed at the current time. Uh, again, those things are all factors that have to be considered ultimately when making your decision based on the situation. A product process strategy, which is another thing we're going to talk about in this chapter, is important because the strategy must consider not just the product, but the service and how to produce it. This comes back to a little bit the capabilities and the concurrency issues that we mentioned. 
Many industries do move their products through life cycles, and this becomes and the automobile industry is a good example. You know, it would be prohibitive for automobile companies to come up with new designs every year, scrap them, and redesign a new car every year. If you go to an auto show, sometimes you'll see a concept car, which they tell you is not going to come out for a year or two years, and, and that's a factor in this thing. Most automobile companies now have to go through a five-year life cycle. It used to be seven, but the Japanese companies have forced the American companies to uh, shrink their life cycle process. In order to get payoff on all the designs, the tooling, and all the investments they've had to make, it would be impossible to get a payoff on a new car design within the first year. It usually takes five years for you to get your money back and make some money. Uh, different types of life cycle stages take place depending on the type of product or service that we're talking about. Of course, when you have a one-of-a-kind type of product, that's got a very short life cycle to it and it's constantly changing. If you have low volume uh, and don't have to standardize things, that's kind of the next step in the process. Uh, if you go to higher volume with less distinction in your products, now you're getting into longer life cycles because you're going to invest more to set that process up and it takes a longer time to get payback for that. Mm. Okay, uh, at the process level, I want to remind everybody that uh, stages we have are a project stage, we have a job shop stage, a batch stage, an assembly line, and continuous process. Each of those are higher elevations of the previous one, depending on what your demand is and the needs. Uh, of your particular application. Uh, again, uh, a reminder for everybody to look at the illustrations in a chapter to get a better idea of what we're talking about here. And we also want to mention focused operations. This is important with respect to companies' capabilities because most companies have products within services with different volume levels and levels of standardization. If you try to mix them into the same process and the same operation, you're going to get a lot of confusion. A good example is uh, in one company I was with, we actually made the same product, which was an electronic connector, but the applications were different. We made the same product, which went into uh, very high-level Cray computers, but it was on a commercial level so the documentation quality requirements were different. But that same co connector went into the space shuttle. And in that case, they didn't have high volumes, but the documentation, the quality requirements in the space shuttle program were totally different. For us to make that on the same floor and mix everything together would have been a disaster. We had to actually run them as if they were two separate businesses. Uh, we want to remind everybody of the different types of focus there is, especially in a manufacturing environment. The focus can be oriented towards a product. It can be towards the process. Sometimes you want to emphasize the technology or uh, the philosophy, either make to stock or make to order, and even so far as to look at new products and how you're going to do that. Uh, and we did mention mass customization. These are custom-made products, but you want to do them in a, a, as high a level as possible to get the efficiencies that you're trying to make. Uh, and the le one of the mo final things that we want to remind everybody in this chapter is the environmental issues are very important, not just the pollution 
control issues, but there's other environmental issues dealing with infrastructures and remanufacturing that all become important and in today's world become a bigger part of playing into and considering how you're going to run your operations. Uh, and probably in conclusion, I want to bring everybody back to the cross-functionality issue, reminding everybody that if you're part of the same organization, you need to talk to each other and work together. That is marketing, finance, human relations, IT, uh, engineering, and accounting all have to be on the team at the same time throughout the whole process.